Nahum chapter 2. We are talking about the wicked, verse 15 of chapter 1. He, goes back to the wicked, that dashes in pieces is come up before thy face. Israel. Antichrist is going to devour not just Jews, but people. It's going to declare wars. Look at the, the four horses they call the apocalypse. One of them is war. One of them is death. Keep the munitions. Second Chronicles 10, 4, Ephesians 6, 17. Watch the way, Luke 21, 34. Make thy loins, Luke 12, 35, strong. Fortify thy power mightily, Ephesians 6, 10. There's a battle coming. You better be strong in the Lord. How? Okay. When I, when I first got saved, there were these movies out about we're going to beat the Antichrist in the tribulation period and all that. We're going to fight. If Michael the Archangel, the Prince of Israel, defeats Satan by the word of the God, by the word of the Lord, and Jesus Christ who faced Satan in the wilderness and defeats Satan by the word of the Lord, you're going to conquer this man? You're going to win over the Antichrist? Michael and his angels in Revelation 12 can't even destroy Satan. Satan's cast out of out of heaven upon the earth. And God is telling the people in Nahum, be prepared. It says in Revelation 12, woe to them that happens to the earth, for Satan knows he has a little time, and he's got wrath. These people don't realize, even though he's a loser, what power Satan has. You realize According to 1 John, Satan only has three weapons in his entire arsenal. The lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. That's the only three things he's got. And how many men have been slain? And God is telling those Jews in the tribulation, suit up, get prepared. And Jesus tells them, Get your AK-7s, get your bazookas, get your tank. He says, no, he says, you, if you're in a house stop, run. Don't even grab anything. You're in, a, you're in the woods, go, run. For the Lord has turned away the excellency of Jacob because of their sins. As the excellency of Israel, for the emptiers have emptied them out going to empty the land. They're going to sell a pizza. Anybody else left behind as Jews will be killed. The Holy Land. And we're going to go over there and plant trees and make it beautiful again for the Antichrist. And mar their vine branches. He's going to mar them. He's going to make it so they don't grow. He's going to stop the growth. He's going to kill them. The shield of his mighty men is made red. Blood. That means they're going to be in action. It's going to be a verb. It's going to be wars. They're not going to paint them red. The valiant men are in scarlet. Blood. Isaiah 1.18. Though your sins be in scarlet. They're murdering people. It's sin. When you work with the Antichrist in the war, it's sin. The chariot shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation. With flaming torches. They came to Jesus by night in the garden with torches. And the fir tree shall be terribly shaken. You want automobiles in NASCAR? The chariot shall rage in the streets. Road rage comes out of well, of all words that you pick. Why did you pick the word that comes? From, why can't you say road anger? Idiot, road idiot, road revenge. 
What would the other Bible say? They shall justle one against another in the broad ways. What did Jesus say about the broad ways? They shall seem like torches. You ever see a, a quick picture at night taken with traffic rushing through and it looks like just light streaking through? They shall run like the lightnings. Again, that's pictures. There's, there's automobiles in the Bible. He shall recount his worthies. We're going to have a recount. They shall stumble in their walk. They shall make haste to do the wall thereof. Gotta hurry up. Something wrong with the wall. The defense shall be prepared. Getting ready for battle. The gates of the river shall be open. And the powers shall be dissolved. Now look at him note here. Uh, the city was flooded. And King, King of uh, Nineveh committed suicide with all his family. God knows what he's talking about. I just got to learn how to write a little neater. Better. The gates of the, the, the city was flooded and the king of Nineveh committed suicide with his family. The gates of the river shall be opened and the power shall be dissolved by water. And Husbah shall be led away captive. She shall be brought up and her maid shall lead her as with the voice of doves. You hear doves? I ain't got such a lone. I mean, you hear doves is like tabering upon their breasts. Little breast music instruments. That'll probably be next in America. I think they do got some. I don't know. But Nineveh is of old like a pool of water. You're in a desert region. Water was scarce. And where there was water, there was a city. And there's a lot of people. Caravans would come through here to get water, supplies, food. They would have the areas marked. You realize Las Vegas in America, if you were to cut off all the water, that city has no natural resource. If you were to turn off the pipes, clog the pipes or whatever, turn it up, Las Vegas would not survive. And this pool of water that gives life to the people destroys the city. Yet they shall flee away. Stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. We're running. That's when they're saying, stand, stop running, stop, help us. No. They were better than Lot's wife. They didn't look back. Take ye to spoil silver. Spoil. That's a Bible word for armies that have gotten victory. Take the spoil of gold. For there is none end of the store. Well, Nineveh must have been richly city. And glory out of all the pleasant furniture. Help yourself. Go take their couches. Go take their beds. Go take their tables. Go take their lampstand. Take their cash. Take their coins. Take it all. She is empty and void. And waste. Isn't empty enough? Think, think about a house. You know, it's on the market. No one's living. You walk in and it's empty. Void. It has no use as of yet. And waste. It's got no cupboards, got no bathrooms, got no kitchen. Bugs are running around. Termites are having fun. Ants are invading the place. Maybe a couple of wild animals made a nest in the place. Roof leaks. And the heart melteth. And the knees smite together. Anxiety. 
and the knees smite together. Ooh. Much pain is in all loins. When you experience fear, the first reaction of your body is your intestines. There's something, I don't know what, I don't know what it's called, but your brain reaction to fear goes straight down to your intestines first. And the faces of them all gather blackness. You know, this is God's judgment. This is God's judgment upon sin. You don't call it names or give it abbreviations. It may be God smiting that person to get their attention. And if you're going to give them a shrink or a pill, you may be turning them away from God. This is one of the things God's doing to the people in Nineveh. To get their attention. You're a sinner. Psychiatry and doctrine will turn you away from God. Where is the dwelling of the lions? Now the lions here to Nineveh would be their enemies. Lions are considered enemies. Satan is a lion of the enemy of the Christians. Well, it's supposed to be an enemy of the Christians. Not much today. Where are the lions dwelling? And the feeding place of the young lions. We'll be on the city in a moment. Where the lion, even the old lion, you got young and old lions taking part. Even the old lion walk. And the lion's whelp, that's a young lion, baby lion, and none made them afraid. You show me a lion. I don't know if it would be the best thing to run, but my reaction would be to run. This great city of lions, and no one's afraid of them. The lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps to feed the whelps, the little babies, and strangled for his lioness. A lion grips the neck of its prey to bring it down, closes the windpipe, gets the, uh, what's that big vein there? I can't think. Juggler vein. Now, how does a lion know that by evolution? Do lions go to lion school? All right, now, dear lions, look, this is the juggler, and this is where you break their neck so they can't breathe. Watch the videos. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them, you know, on, on television and videos at the video store, however you get. You'll see lions will go after the neck for that final kill. They may catch them in the butt. They may grip them by the leg to, to stop them. But that final bite into the neck. And filled his holes with prey. They take meat back and put it into a hole for dinner, for leftovers, and his dens with raven. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. He's described Nineveh as a lion, enemies of Israel, and that's why Jonah did not want to go there. Lions to the people of Israel, and Jonah's like, these people are fierce. And Ninevites were fierce armies. Assyrians, if you, you ever want to be grossed out and need to throw up, get you a book and study what Assyrians would do to people they capture in war. All their torture devices, and it will make you throw up. Study lions in the Bible. You'll get a great... I've got a book about lions. I've read. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will burn her chariots in the smoke. Uh-oh. Oh, the chariots shall rage in the streets and shall just do one against another in a broad way. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like lions. Yay! God says, I'm going to burn them. So let me ask you a question. 
Yes, I watch TV. I watch movies. In every nuclear war film, what's the first thing they show you? Burnt out cars on the highway? Why? Nahum chapter 2. I will burn her chariots in the smoke. That, that's kind of weird to me. In the smoke, smoke don't burn. There must have been just a thick smoke. And the sword shall devour thy young lions. There'll be no youngsters. I will cut off thy prey from the earth. And the voice of thy messengers. Their communication of their time. Their newspapers, their soldiers carrying orders back to the home front. Uh, gossip. Water cooler talks. Writings. And the voice of their messengers shall no more be heard. When was the last time you had an invite person talk to you? That's it. You're not going to hear him no more. Now, this was a nation that when Jonah came in, said, hey, God is going to get you. He's going to destroy this city. Now, I don't know if God told him 40 days. We, don't, we didn't see that message. And they got right. Here in Nahum, they don't get right. Nahum is a, is a prophecy about a hundred years after Jonah. He has but one subject, the destruction of Nineveh. Uh, the city was destroyed nearly a century later, precisely as prescribed or predicted here. Um, Nahum means comforter. A consolation and the books about God's anger. It's all through the Old Testament because they didn't do right. 